Hi, this is Mike Parnell with ITI Field Services. I'm going to share some things with you about first slings, FIRST, full inspection round sling technology. They make the clear cover round sling. We're going to talk about the removal criteria necessary to pull the slings from service. We'll get some close-up shots of the slings and damage that can be accrued during use and in field applications. So let's get started. One of the first thing that an inspector needs to take care of when he's evaluating slings is to look at the tag or what we call it the identification of the sling. Legible to the reader to, with the owner of the sling needs to be the manufacturer and the stock code or numbering system that represents that sling. Also the rate of capacity of the sling and angle upon which it's based and the number of legs, if more than one, and also the core material, core yarns, which in this case is polyester, and the cover material, in this case again, which is polyester. If they happen to be different, they need to be listed on the tag. So there's a good identification tag. Let me get you a couple of other varieties here, one of which is damage. So take a look at this tag on uh, this sling. The Rate of capacity for vertical and basket have been compromised, make, making this sling unusable in the field. It may be uh, possible that the manufacturer can do a repair. If possible, in that regard, it might need to be proof tested based on their requirements. So this sling has got to be taken out of service. And I'm going to pull another sling into, into view here. If you'll notice, there's plastic material right down here. This is where the tag goes. And I'll roll this sling over for you. And notice we have some indication that the tag was in place at one time. When the sling tag identification is missing or illegible, in either case, the sling needs to be pulled out of service and a determination made, if, if it is replaceable at all, that the manufacturer would have to do that and take steps to warrant the sling for continued use. Slings are also subject to removal because of chemical damage. Caustics, acids, and other items can be harsh to the cover material and to the core yarn, substantially compromising the sling. This sling has been affected by battery acid. The cover is starting to deteriorate rapidly, and you could see the uh, cover breakdown. There's discoloration as the bleed out from the core yarns identifier is bled into the cover area and then we have residue on the surface of the sling. When we have chemical damage to any sling, we need to take it out of service and, and remove it from the property. Heat damage to a polyester sling or high performance sling can be extremely detrimental to the strength and to the muscle of the sling. The Bottom and top range of polyester is minus 40 Fahrenheit to 194 degrees Fahrenheit. On high performance slings, it's minus 40 to plus 158 degrees. The sling I'm holding in front of me has contacted a surface approximately 250 degrees Fahrenheit. We have fusing and melting of the cover that's melted onto and damaged the core yarns, and they're also been fused. Uh, and plasticized together. This sling certainly is a quick candidate for rejection. Let me bring into view some area that has been affected by weld splatter. And in this case, the weld splatter has burned through the cover, leaving dark marks and penetrated and certainly damaged, uh, bubbling up and damaging the core yarns as well. The muscles really compromised in this area. So heat can come from a variety of sources furnaces and hot low contact as well, to, as, well as the welding activities. An additional reason to remove a round sling from service is for a puncture. A puncture is a breach in the outer cover. In this case it can happen from a single side or can be actually passing entirely through the sling. Uh, in any case we almost, almost always compromise and damage the core yarns so I'll turn this sling over. We have a puncture starting here and it finished on this side and the, the passage is completely through the sling. So a puncture is an immediate reject. We have core yarn damage which is where the muscle is and we want to make sure and take this sling out of service so that no one gets hurt. 
Round slings and web slings can be detrimentally affected by foreign material, sandblast, grit, sand, silica, even metal shavings can affect either the webbing on a web sling or can sort their way and sift their way through the cover of any round sling, both clear cover and standard round slings. You'll notice we have silica that's, sort, that's found its way through the cover and once it gets inside, the core yarns can be affected by the cutting action of that silica and that foreign material as the slings take a load and unload and as they bear against hooks and shackles. If we have any suspicion that a sling has foreign material inside of it, we need to remove that sling from service. And this is an advantage of this sling is that you can see that material through the cover. Another cause for damage to a round sling, which would lead to its removal from service, is severe scrubbing and abrasion. You'll notice that the sample here provided shows a substantial melting of the cover and then a shredding or tearing of the core yarns that are exposed. This surface abrasion and chafing has substantially damaged this sling. This is easily a reject and removal from service. Once in a while a sling is used on a job site and it may end up in a hard knot that is pulled under direct tension. And you'll see by the knot here, in the entire sling body, there is a substantial fusing and heat damage inside that knot. We're not, we're not able to untie it. It is, it is permanently in, in place. If someone attempts to take this apart with tools, they'll likely be breaking, breaking the, the cover apart and the core yarns. The sling is completely damaged. It is out of service. Uh, it is now a, a risk and hazard. The heat generated in that knot uh, can cause a substantial loss of strength. So this fusing and damage in this configuration and this orientation needs to be uh, re regarded as an immediate rejection from, from service. Inspection and removal criteria includes cut of the cover for a round sling which in effect exposes the core yarns and generally damages the load bearing yarns inside. With a clear cover typically you can see those cut core yarns, however the core yarns and the cover are independent of each other. You may have a breached or uh, cut cover and the core yarns that have been affected inside have moved or moved down into the sling body. I'll move this so you can see how the breaching effect has occurred to this sling. In all cases, if we have a cut cover, we have to remove the sling from service. During a hand-over-hand -hand inspection of a round sling, the inspector wants to be feeling along the sling for any rebounded or recoiled yarns. You'll notice in this case, we have harsh turnback yarns that you can see through the clear cover. I'm going to move to another location. Let's take a look at this. This can happen once in a great while when a sling is tightly bound around a shackle, a choker hitched to a load, and you get some excessive loading of a couple of core yarns, and they may pop or break, and then they backlash into the sling body. With a clear cover, you, might see, you can see that backlash opportunity, and often you should be able to feel a bulge or an enlargement in the sling in, this, in that exact area. If this occurs, this sling needs to be taken out of service immediately. Rigging hardware that gets incorporated into a round sling is used heavily. You'll also sometimes notice that their da damage can occur between the hardware and the round sling as the rigging is dropped or tossed on the floor. In some cases, the hardware itself is damaged or compromised by metal loss, corrosion, bending, stretching, yielding. You'll notice in this case, this swivel hook is incorporated into the round sling. We have a stretched neck on this shank which would cause the entire sling assembly to be removed from service. This hook has seen its better days and this sling has to be retired because they're one in, in their fabrication. So the sling needs to be removed from service due to damaged fittings. Well, now that we've covered the inspection criteria, let's just talk just for a second before we close out about the protection of the slings. First sling often provides, uh, on your request, 
uh, sliding wear pads which can be incorporated during fabrication. They're a Cordura sleeve that slides over the round sling at the appropriate location. So they slide to location. Another style, similar in nature but a little more robust, that can be added anytime when the sling is in service at a, at a bearing point, is a Velcro double sandwich style closing uh, wear pad. We capture uh, one or two runs of the round sling, sandwich it in, Velcro it down, and place it at our bearing point. And again, this is for chafing, uh, protection, scrubbing, and abrasion. A little more robust is a sling uh, guard, and it's a synthetic tube that can be slid uh, over the entire round sling, and it can be uh, going to bearing corners and contact points, and it is a heavy abrasion uh, and protection for significant surfaces that can challenge or compromise the round sling. A uh, fourth style is much like that Velcro open enclosure. However, this has spacer blocks integrated into the webbing that when we capture a sling for helping hold the sling off of a corner, you can see that these spacer blocks help hold the sling away from the edge uh, from direct contact for friction or cutting damage. So this, this enclosure is uh, uh, really helpful to help uh, protect against cut damage or sliding friction damage. Well, that wraps it up for First Sling in this presentation. I hope you've enjoyed your time, and uh, thanks for visiting. I hope to see you soon. Bye.